Showing a user a dialog in your mobile app is something that occurs quite often. You show a user a dialog when an action is successful. You show a user a dialog when an action fails. And you also show them a dialog sometimes when you don't quite know what's happening in the app but you want to warn them that anything might go wrong. In the video today, we'll go through the custom setup for our dialog building that we use in Stacked. If you are keen to learn anything about our setup, please follow along with this video and I'm sure you'll learn something new. Today we'll start our tutorial at the last point of the boxed out project. You could also follow along with a brand new project that's set up with the stacked architecture. If you don't know how to set up the stacked architecture, please check out the video that I'll link in the top right corner. Once you have your code downloaded and opened in Visual Studio Code, we'll start the implementation. To set up a custom dialog with our dialog service, you need to register builders. Each builder is mapped to a different value and we'll use enums for those values. We'll start by creating a new folder called enums in the lib folder and inside we'll create a file called dialog type. And in this file we'll create a new enum called dialog type with a single enum type for now called basic. So now that we have our enum we can set up our builders. So under the lib slash UI folder we'll create a new folder called shared. And in that folder we'll create a new file called setup dialog UI. Then we'll create a new function that returns a type void called setup dialog UI. The first thing we'll do in this function is get our dialog servers from our locator. And then we'll create a map of builders that will map our enum type that we created to a builder function. This is where we'll add all of our custom dialogs that we'll show in our application. The builder is a function that takes the build context, the dialog request, as well as a completer function. And it expects you to return a widget. We'll return a basic dialog widget that takes in request as well as our completer. And once we have that map of boulders, we want to register our custom dialog boulders with the dialog service. To keep the code maintenance high and make it easier to manage, keep the widget for the dialog in its own widget and file. And do not construct it inline within your boulders map. We'll create a new folder in the shared folder called dialogs. And inside we'll create a new file called basic dialog. And in this file we'll create a new stateless widget called basic dialog. We know that we need to pass in our dialog request and we also need to pass in our completer function. Then for the body of the widget we'll return a dialog and we'll set our background color to transparent. For the child of this dialog we'll create a new widget called basic dialog content and we'll pass in the request as well as the completer function. Then we can create our basic dialog content stateless widget. We can copy the same signature for the basic dialog and create the same final values as well. We'll just quickly run through building the Flutter UI for this dialog. You can find all of the stylings on the written tutorial if I go too fast. But I'm not a fan of building UIs on screen that doesn't involve animation so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. For the root of the basic dialog content we'll create a stack. We'll set the clip behavior to none and we'll set the alignment to top center. And for the children we'll only have two children in the stack. The first one will be a container. We'll set the margin equal to symmetric margins. The horizontal value will be 4% of the screen width. And then we'll set our padding. We'll make the top 32. Left and right will be 16 and the bottom will be set to 12. For the styling of the container, we'll give it a box decoration that has a background color set to white and a border radius of 24. That's it for the styling and now we can move on to the content of this container. For the child, we'll give it a column with a main axis size set to minimum. The first child in this column will be a small vertical space. Then we'll give it the box text subheading and pass in the title and we'll also align it to the center. The request will contain all the information that you passed in when you asked for the dialog to be shown. 
We'll follow that by another small vertical space and then we'll give it a body text with the description as the text and we'll also align that to the center. We'll follow that with a medium vertical space and then we'll work on the two buttons at the bottom of the dialog. To manage the two buttons, we'll place it inside of a row and for the main axis alignment, we'll set that to space around so that we have space between the items in this row. The first child will be conditional and we'll check if the secondary button is not equal to null and if it's not equal to null, we'll show a text button. For the on pressed call, we will call the completer and pass the dialog response back with the confirm value set to false. And for the child, we'll set the body text and pass in the secondary button title as the text value and we'll set the color to black. And for the last button, we'll create another text button and for the on pressed function, we'll call our completer function and pass in a dialog response with the confirm value set to true. For the child of this button, we'll pass in a body text with the main button title as the text and we'll set the color to the primary color. And that's it for the content of our dialog. The last thing we have to add is the circular indicator at the top that will represent the three statuses of the dialog. Success, error and warning. We'll collapse the container so we can see more clearly what we are building. And for the last child, we'll create a positioned widget. We'll set the top to minus 28. For the child, we'll pass in a circle avatar. We'll set the minimum radius to 16. And we'll set the max radius to 28. Then we'll get our color from the get status color function. We'll pass in the custom data from the request. And for the child of the circle avatar, we'll give it a icon widget. For the icon data, we'll call a function called get status icon and we'll pass in the custom data as well. We'll set the size of this icon to 28 and we'll set the color to white. The get status color function will return a color and take in the dynamic property for the custom data. Here we'll have a simple switch statement and we'll switch on the custom data property. When we get an error, we want to return a red color. And to make sure we have the correct enums, let's create the enum for the basic dialog status. We'll create that in the same enums folder that we created earlier. We'll call this file basic dialog status and we'll create an enum called basic dialog status that has three values, success, error, and warning. Back to the UI, if we get the error case, we want to return KC red color. We still have to create that in the box UI package. If we get the warning case, we want to return KC orange color. And for any other case, we want to return the primary color. Then we can open up the app colors file in the box UI package and in this file we will add KC red color and the value for this will be F44336 and then we'll add another color called KC orange color and the value for this will be FF9800. The next function to create is our get status icon function which returns icon data and takes in the custom data as a parameter. For this function we will create another basic switch statement. We'll switch on the custom data and if the case is error we want to return icons.close. If the case is warning we want to return icons.warningamber. And for any other case, we want to return the check mark as the icons. And that is all the functionality and UI for our custom dialog. If we go back to the setup dialog file, we'll see that there's an error and that's because I made a mistake and this should actually be the dialog response and not a dialog request. And now that everything is set up, we need to call our setup dialog function. If you go to the main file of the customer project, we can call the setup dialog function after we have set up our locator. Now in the last video in the address selection view model, we built the functionality to show a dialog when the user is not in a serviced city. That's a dialog that we'll replace with our new custom dialog.
So you can open up the address selection view model. So in the dialog service, when a city is not serviced, we are currently showing a normal dialog. We want to turn that into our custom dialog. So instead of show dialog, we'll use show custom dialog. To tell the dialog service which builder to use that we registered, we have to pass in a variant that maps to the enums that we registered. So for our variant, we'll pass in the basic dialog type. For the type of the basic dialog, we know we are using the custom data and our basic dialog status. So we'll pass in the error enum from our status. The title and the description stays the same. Then on our dialog, we know that we are showing two buttons. The first one is our main button title. For that, we'll pass in city not serviced dialog main button. We can head over to the constants file and we'll create the property city not serviced dialog main button for the value we'll simply return got it and then we'll also create the city not service dialog secondary button and the value will be view areas and for our secondary button title we can pass in the city not service dialog secondary button i'm going to go ahead and set up the emulator so that we can test out our results to test this out properly we'll start our firebase emulators and now that everything is up and running, we can launch our customer application. We'll go ahead and create an account and then we'll select an address that is not in Cape Town. If we try and save this address, we should see our new custom dialog pop up. And just to check that everything is working, we'll show the different statuses for this dialog. We'll start off by showing a warning. And as you see, we can see the orange warning symbol. And the last one is to show the success dialog. And that is the whole process of setting up our custom dialog service. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see and follow along with this project, please subscribe and consider liking this video. I will see you guys next week in the next video.